As mentioned in the last video, after editing it, I changed the way the daytime color blends with the scene using the same method as overlaying in Photoshop. So let's have a look at this blend mode in Photoshop, or Photoshop Elements in my case. I already have a screenshot open in Photoshop. To simulate what we're going to do in GameMaker, I'm adding an adjustment layer with a fill color. My Photoshop version is not in English, but the layer should be the one on the top of the list. Then I'm setting the blend mode to overlay. Photoshop names them somehow weirdly in other languages, but overlay is just the first blend mode in the third block. So this brightens the image, but somehow preserves some of the contrast. To get overlay to a neutral position, we can set the color to a medium gray. To give it a red tint, I select the red with medium saturation and medium value. Play around a bit like I do to get a feel for this blend mode. In example how the image changes with a bright saturated red or darker saturated red or bright desaturated red. So the overlays in our case will most likely look best when the color is somewhere in the middle of the color pick or a bit to the right or up. But playing around with those colors also shows that overlay alone won't be the solution. So we'll stick to the other factors we already implemented as well. We'll still use contrast, saturation and the rest of it. Before implementing this in our day and night shader project, I'm going to swap to my usual base project and just add an overlay shader there. Just to make sure the code is working. So I'll create a new shader and call it shader overlay color. And I duplicate the module template and call it object overlay color. and place it in a test room on the main layer. In create event of the overlay object, I'm adding the usual stuff. Info text, sprite, and shader. Now I decided not to use vertex color for the day and night shader, and I'll stick to that in this overlay shader. But of course, if you're just interested in overlaying, using the vertex color would be much simpler. But in this case, I need to create a uniform for the overlay color. So I need the handler uCall for the uniform call. In draw event, I'm setting up three local variables, R, G, and B, and set them to my three sliders with a range from zero to one. And before drawing the sprite, I'm passing those three values as an array with shader set uniform f array to the uniform u call. Now to coding the shader. We won't need the vertex shader, but we also won't need the vertex color, so I'm just removing in color and vv color. And in the fragment shader, I'm removing vv color as well and split the gl frag color line as I always do. Now we actually need the overlay maths to do this. I found a nice Photoshop blend mode maths site created by Rogelio Bernal Andreo. In here there's also the maths for the overlay blend mode. So let's just copy that and paste it in our fragment shader beneath the main function for now. And let's have a closer look at this. There seems to be some comparison on both lines. After this comparison is the blend mode math and apparently both lines get added together. Target has to be the luminance of pixel color of the image. In our case that's the luminance of base color RGB. And if that's above 0.5 the comparison on the first line returns 1 and thus the first line is calculated normally. But then the comparison on the second line has to return 0 and thus the second line is 0. And since both lines are added together, the result would be line 1 plus 0. If, however, the luminance of base called RGB is below 0.5, the first line will be 0 and the second line will be calculated normally. So the result would be 0 plus line 2. So it seems in overlay blend mode, if the luminance of the pixel is above 0.5, it uses a different calculation than it, when it is below 0.5.
Now in the rest of the line, target has to be base color RGB and not just the luminance of base color, or we'd completely lose the color information. And blend has to be the overlay color we're going to use, so let's start coding. First we need the uniform VEC3 color. That's the color we pass into the shader. Now this being a tutorial video, I want to do this in several versions. Version 1 is using an if statement. We're getting the luminance using the dot product and the NTSC vector as we had so often by now. Float luminance is the dot product of base color RGB and the NTSC vector. Then we check if the luminance is above or below 0.5 and implement the overlay maths by Rogelio by setting the base color RGB to one of the two lines in his formula. So if luminance is greater than 0.5, base color RGB is 1 minus open bracket 1 minus 2 times open bracket base color RGB minus 0.5 close bracket close bracket times open bracket 1.0 minus col close bracket. And if it's below 0.5, so else, base color RGB is open bracket 2.0 times base color RGB close bracket times call. Now let's run this and see what it looks like. So at the moment we blend medium gray since our sliders are set to 0.5. In Photoshop we learned this would not change the image's color and it seems our shader is working that way too. If we play around with the colors we see how those colors are overlaid with the image. I've also set red to 1 and green blue to 0 to compare with Photoshop and uh, I noticed Rogelio's math seems to work pretty well. Now to version 2, without an if statement but with rounding luminance instead. What we're doing here is creating two floats which determine whether the luminance is light or dark. And we do that by adding 0.5 to the luminance and then flooring the result. So if the luminance is 0.5 or above, float light will store 1, and if not, float light will store 0. So float light is floor, open bracket, 0.5 plus the gray value. And we inverse the result for float dark. Float dark is 1 minus light. Now we can do exactly the same as Rogelio did by multiplying line 1 with light and line 2 with dark and adding the results like so. Base color RGB is light times the first line plus dark times the second line. Let's run this again and it still looks the same. Now version 3, the inline if statement. No idea how it's officially called though, I just call it that way. This is something I haven't used in GMA so far simply because I didn't know it worked, but actually it does. Just to demonstrate, we are going to make a test in the uh, draw event of our object. So just after the shader is reset, we write draw text x, y, Open bracket global dot slider one is greater than 0.5 close bracket question mark quote light end quote colon quote dark end quote close bracket. So we draw a text at position x and y. Which text is determined by this inline if? The comparison global dot slider one is greater than 0.5 returns either true or false. The question mark tells this is an if statement and if the comparison returns true, the expression between the question mark and the colon is returned, so light is returned. And if the result of the comparison is false, the expression after the colon is returned, so in our case dark. If we run this and move slider 1, you'll see that this inline if statement works in GMS. And it works the exact same way in GLSL. So let's comment out this draw text line and return to our fragment shader. We still need to get the luminance as before. And now we can stitch those two lines together again. Base color RGB is 
if luminance is greater than 0.5, it's line 1. And else, it's line 2. Now if we run the program again, we can see this is working still. So we got our overlay maths right. Now it's time to implement this in our day and night shader. So I'm switching to that day and night project file. So back in our day and night cycle project. I don't want to overwrite the version we created before. So I'm duplicating the shader we had and renamed a new one to shader day and night v11. I'm also duplicating the object and rename it to object day and night v11 as well and replace the previous object version with the new one in our room. I'll also copy the script script set alpha, rename it as well by adding v11 and inside the script we needed to refer to the new object day and night v11. Now in create event in the section water reflection, we need to change the script script set alpha to the new script which is created. For now we won't need to change anything in the object and just add the overlay to the fragment shader. So just above the GL frag color line I'm adding the overlay line as we created it in our overlay color shader. Out call is if gray is greater than 0.5, it's line 1. else it's line 2. As target we're using out call now and as blend we use call, the uniform we pass in. And of course we mustn't forget to remove the overlay color from the GL frag color calculation or we'd still multiply it in. And I forgot to change the shade in our object. So I just set the shader in uh, create event to our new shader version 1.1. 1, 1. And now when we run the program it will look very wrong of course. Everything is way too bright and saturated. But what happens if we move the overlay code up to just after we determined the grey value? Let's see how that looks. Now daytime is even brighter but at least nighttime looks much better. It's not as saturated anymore. Now let's reposition the saturation line. I want that to be just after the overlay. And running this program once more, we can't see a huge difference. But we'll leave it like that and close the fragment shader. Now what we need to do is finding new colors and contrast and such to work with the overlay system. I used the overlay of an adjustment layer in Photoshop to get started and tweaked values from there. By the way, you can't really use GIMP for this unless you find the overlay formula for GIMP. It's not the same as Photoshop's formula. But in this video, I'll once again just copy the final colors from the notes in the base project, or you can also use the linked file in the description of this video. As you can see, we now got 12 key times instead of the 8 we had earlier. This leaves us with a bit more control. We got more daylight now since the sun can set later. But that also means we need to tweak the reflection alpha calculation a bit. So in step event I just change phase amplitude and shift to this. The phase is plus 0.4 now. The amplitude is 1.3. And the Y shift is plus 0.3. Now let's run this one last time and see how this version looks. I really do like this. It could use some more tweaking here and there, but I do like this better than the first version. But it might not suit every style, which is why I didn't overwrite the first version. I'm just going to run both at the same time for you to compare and decide which is better for your project. So that's it for this simple day and night shader. As mentioned, maybe I'll come back to it later when we learn more about text records and additional textures, but I'm not sure yet. I hope you enjoyed this video and like this day and night system. If you keep working on it, I'd be very much interested in seeing the results. Just leave a link in the comments. Until next time.